Hello everyone, my name is Randy Robart, and I'll be speaking about humanizing your online teaching as well as self-care. Teaching online for me came at lightning speed. I'm sure it was the same for most of you as well. It makes me reflect on my students when learning a new media or technique for the first time. There are those who dive right in, and then there's those that just aren't quite sure what to make of the situation hold back just a little. There's a quote in my brick-and-mortar classroom by Nelson Mandela that says, It always seems impossible until it's done. And I think online teaching is like that. We will get there. It's going to be okay. Now on to humanizing your online teaching. Humanizing. That is, recreating human qualities within your online teaching. And it requires two key elements accessibility between teacher and learners to build community. To understand this, we'll need to consider and recognize everyone's teaching situations in vastly different locations with different groups of individuals. We know the availability of technology for our students may or may not be an issue. We know it's the same for us. We decide what works best and we go with it. We know most were not given much, if any, time to prepare for this. We do know what needs to be done, and we find our way and make accommodations. As we reach out to our students, we want to create a sense of community, a sense of belonging, much like in your own brick-and-mortar classroom. And how do you plan to be there for your students to create that sense of accessibility? It's a far easier concept to grasp within our brick-and-mortar buildings, but online, we as teachers need to rethink community and togetherness as much as possible. Regarding online platforms, this is, again, different depending on your given situations. But no matter the platform of choice, it's important to remember teacher accessibility. This is created by the variety of platforms. Again, try some different online tools beyond delivering an online-typed assignment. Making a video tutorial is great, but so is a video just to say, hello, I hope your day is going well, and I hope you are all well in your home today. Humanizing requires three things. The first of those is presence. You want to think about your variety of digital platforms and what has worked best for you, what you've come up with, what you're thinking about, what you've used so far. And as you reach out to your students and you're thinking about presence, remember that in your brick and mortar classroom, your students have watched you demonstrate materials. They've watched you and listened to you make explanations. They see you help students as you move around your room. Online, this has to be accomplished remotely. Students or even parents might email a question about materials technique or just a request for encouragement, all requiring your digital platform of choice. One of the things that you can do to create this sense of presence is to set specific office hours. Acknowledge your students won't be working at the time your class normally occurs. I know my own students, for the most part, will sleep in and stay up late if able. But this doesn't mean you need to be on call 24-7. Please set specific office hours. Those are the times you're going to be available. Even if a student emails in the middle of the night, you'll be able to respond when you open your office at the allotted time. And if you want to make alternative arrangements to meet a student's schedule, that could be mutually arranged. Again, it really depends on your situation, but having dedicated office hours will let your students know when you're available a certain specific time. Then respond time for your students and for yourself. When students have classroom issues, try to respond as soon as you are able, keeping lines of communication open and knowing you would be available facilitates the sense of trust between student and teacher. Also, be involved. While dedicated office hours foster trust, checking student emails, classroom assignment, progress, and other times of the day is equally important. We all have a few students who struggle, and when a deadline is fast approaching, a note of encouragement as a general reminder is often beneficial. So reach out. Let your students know you're there for them. 
For some, you may just be their lifeline. Then there's awareness. For me, there's so many variations of this to consider. For example, my mind goes straight to my special needs students, visualizing those with fine motor issues or with low reading abilities. I think of others who work many evenings after school, and yes, most are self-isolating, but some hold jobs at fast food restaurants and are still working. Also, I visualize students who struggle in difficult home situations and those students who depend on schools for their better meals or perhaps only meals of the day. And then there's my gifted students who take classroom assignments and just fly. They just go with them. It's amazing what they can do. Be aware of students' abilities as they impact your lessons and adjust your expectations accordingly. Technology matters. Your home life matters. But remember that personal expression in your art making is still very important. Humanizing also requires empathy. I think teachers are pretty good at this. I'll bet all of you watching this are good with empathy. It's what makes great teachers great teachers. Remember those students I think of in my classroom that have physical or mental trauma happening in their lives. Uh, those are the ones I pull aside and I have a little conversation with them. Just kind of touch base on how they are, what they're doing, and how things are going for them. You know, in, where I, in Ohio where I live, it's a very rural community. The virus hasn't affected many, but those numbers change every day. So while you may or may not know what's going on in your student lives, it never hurts to reach out with a class email, a video of support, or something that just says, I hope you're doing well today. Okay, quick review again. Remember that humanizing your digital online platform, whatever that choice might be, that best suits you, best suits your students' needs, and furthers your ability to create that accessibility between teacher and learner and builds that community for you for a great online school experience for yourself and your students. And those three requirements again, presence, be there, be a constant in your students' lives. Awareness, situations vary so greatly from student to student, from teacher to student, from location to location. But we just need to recognize and remember this. And lastly, empathy. Again, letting your students know you care. Remember again, you might just be a lifeline. If you want, send them a virtual hug or a smiley face to brighten their day, or perhaps just the phrase, hey, you rock. You never know the impact of positive reinforcement, and it costs nothing but a moment of your time. And also, these things will overlap. They flow and ebb just like the ocean's waves. It's a fluid thing, so go with the flow. You are all rock stars singing the praises of encouragement to your students. You can do this. Oh, yeah, you can. So now we've covered the class structure. What have you been doing for yourself? Have you been taking care of you? Practicing self-care isn't always easy, and usually we are not high on our own priority list, especially when self-isolating from the COVID-19 pandemic. Do you have a busy home life with an entire family self-isolating? You know, a crazy amount of things to care for between children, significant others, and then adding into the mix making sure family, such as parents, grandparents, and others, those that may not be living in your home, are taken care of. How often do you check to see if the dog or cat was fed? And what about the never-ending pile of laundry? That no matter how much you wash, that pile just stays the same. He gads. The sum total of daily life tasks may seem unrelenting or overwhelming. Or perhaps you're glued to your devices, checking the latest text, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, or other social media sites. Perhaps it's online gaming. Remember, if you stretch yourself too thin, you run the risk of damaging your own health and relationships as well. So consider for a moment two areas of self-care 
There's the basics. Those simple things to promote good health that we all should do, but sometimes we don't. It's just easier that way, we think to ourselves. And then there's those things that are just things that promote well-being beyond basic health, things that require you just to make the time. We don't always do those either. So let's start with the basics. Eating healthy. This is a good one. We all get this. We know what eating healthy should be. It doesn't always fit into our schedules. Uh, but we understand the benefits of eating healthy from medical issues such as reduced heart and diabetes to better mood. We champion this in our young, but most often lose such focus when growing older. Pizza is great, don't get me wrong, but perhaps just don't eat it every night. So be on point for your students and your family every day. Eat healthy. So here's another good one, exercise. You know, regular physical exercise, it's great, great benefits. Again, we all know that. We've heard it many times. It's good for you, it can help you lose weight, it increases a positive mood, but if you're like many others, you're either too busy keeping up with the kids, or a significant other, or you're too tired, again, it's the kids, significant other, or maybe, just maybe, you're still staring at that pile of laundry, aren't you? Still the same size, isn't it? It's all there. And it could also just be that while self-isolating, giving up your visits to your local gym, it's become lower on your priority list. Well, the good news about exercise is that it's never too late to start or get back in the game. Oh, right. We're self-isolating. Gee, I'm excused. Can't go to the gym. No, 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 no. You can't get out of it that easy. If you're a regular gym person and work out at home and want to get back into the exercise, yeah, with doctor's approval, if that's what you need, then think, does a dog need to go for a walk? Or your kids, for that matter? How many times have you walked up and down the stairs today? Whatever your physical condition and doctor-approved capacity for exercise, just move and you'll feel better. So, you're self-isolating. You're home all day, every day. At first, it may have been exciting to think to yourself, I can wear my pajamas all day long today. Well, you know, if you do that, day after day after day, probably won't feel so great anymore. Yeah, we all kind of get that. You know, sticking to a morning ritual of self-care and getting ready for your day, whenever that day may begin, should be higher on everybody's priority list. Just saying, we all know it. Oh, get your rest. We all know this one. When was the last time you asked a student when they went to sleep the previous evening? Teachers understand mental capacities increase with enough sleep. With that being said, have you kept track of your sleep patterns lately? Self-isolating allows us more freedom of when we go to bed and when we wake, but keeping a more structured schedule will benefit sleep time and hopefully your well-being as well. Again, a schedule's best. Try to de-stress before going to sleep. Unplug your devices. Read a book. Stay away from caffeine in the evenings if you need to. Whatever works best for you to promote restful sleep. Okay, we covered the basic. Those basic things that we all should be doing for ourselves. Those are all covered. Now is those things that you make time for. Those things that just bring you joy. Another thing to make time for is music. You know, it's well known among my students that music is a major part of my creative spirit. While I'm still old school and rely on a classroom radio, no arguing over specific song choices, just genres that way. Many of my colleagues utilize playlists. I personally find classroom studio time far more enjoyable and creative when background music is playing. It sets the mood and tone for learning, which is not any different for us at home. So, as you spend time at home, Turn on the tunes. If you need something uplifting, something soft, whatever, find the music of your choice and enjoy. Many musicians have offered online concerts as we self-isolate. 
Next thing to make time for. That's if you're able. Get some fresh air. Staying inside drives some folks a little crazy. So if you go out in a heavy populated area though, be safe. If you live like me in a more rural area, getting out for fresh air is refreshing. Yesterday I was able to work in my flower beds as I prep for warmer weather. Reading. Do you have a reading list? You know, now it's time. Reach for that book that's been sitting on the shelf, gathering dust. Remember that reading text messages and social media posts, not the same as a book in a magazine. Not going to count them. Sorry. And no, read the directions on the back of prepackaged food items. They're not the same either. Read a story to your children, to your significant other. Even if they're asleep, if they're asleep, just read real quietly. They won't mind. We'll count that. Just read, even if you're reading to your pet. You can Skype to your grandchild. Read them a story. The name of the game is to promote your own well-being. You can do this. So, do you have a green thumb? Do you have plants in your house? Plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. There's your science lesson for the day. And that can enhance the air quality of a room, any room. It also can brighten your living space. For many, it seems either you have that green thumb or you don't. And if you do, tend to your plants. Play them a tune if you want. There's that music. You will both benefit. So you're at home all day now, self-isolating. You're watching the news, or you're reading the same thing online quite a bit. For many, feelings of worry pop up. Help yourself by keeping a journal instead. Whether you intend anyone to read or not, down the road is totally up to you. You decide that. But it's a good opportunity for you to get your feelings out there. Just write them away. Staying connected. This is so important for your loved ones who have no one else, perhaps. They will appreciate you taking a moment to call, to email, or whatever you can do to let them know you're just thinking of them. Be a ray of sunshine in their daily lives, and it will reflect back on you. Pets! This is one of my personal favorites. Your pets offer unconditional love, so feed them, and feed the love. So you or your children feel creative. See what you may have around the house and just make fun memories. And always remember, joy reflects. It's a mirror to the world. Let your joy shine by making time for you. No one else has that control but you. So be well, my friends. Stay safe. Do it for your family. Do it for your friends. Do it for your students and colleagues. But truthfully, do it for yourself. You're worth it. You can do it.